you know, the because Sorry. she. Sorry, she, Dave, I, uh, that. I, I as a bonehead, and I'm so excited to see you. I forgot to click one little thing, so now my video recording is just now starting. But hey, that's all right. <laughs> also, we aren't. We haven't been recording yet. We've been recording audio. We've been doing the radio show, but it's just like you know, hey, the video thing is just the side action of what we do here. Well, you what know, the hell are you doing? You do this stuff all the time. What the hell's wrong with you? Don't no. you know what the hell you're doing? Would you would you like me to restart, sir? No, that's okay. We won't restart. Uh, we I'm just joking go. with you. That's, see, that's the technical whole... difficulty. Some of the BS that goes with this stuff. So no, we're all good. So yeah. anyway, what the, the bottom line is, you know, you have the audio from it. And the bottom line is we're here into getting into the holidays. This will be our second Christmas. And um, so, yeah, things are, things are good. It's a, it, you know, I had a total life change. I'm 64 and you know, the, the age, cause you're the age and, uh, uh, and, and Carol's age, she's 62 and she is a wonderful wife and wonderful person. So, I mean, we've, we're building something here and uh, I have a lot of different changes. This was a, game changer this wasn't an easy thing where you know it, it, you see, I think of like ball players and coaches when they get traded or get moved and that's what it's sort of like to me I, I got traded down here and I had to get acclimated uh and the weather is warmer and that is a plus it's a different kind of you know you're not going to get five feet of snow which they get in uh mid-Michigan and Wisconsin where where you have another home uh and you know, it, it still is a, uh, you know, I still have some unbelievable ties. There was people that when I came here, you know, there were certain people that just couldn't understand why we moved here. And we moved here because you have one life and you got to do things that sometimes are out of the ordinary for other people. And uh, I've always been a nonconformist and I don't really give a crap what other people think. I used to, I don't anymore. So you know, we, we made a move and we love it and we're building on it and uh, we're going to continue to do that. Well, that's a good synopsis of what's going on here. My guest today, everybody, Dave DeMarco, I'm going to call this one scoreboard just because Dave is like the kingpin. When I go and we do, and if you haven't had a chance to see any of David's minutes, Dave, the mad dog minutes, they're very entertaining. We do three a week. Dave records them. I edit them. Jamie sponsors them. I mean, it's a big team event here in, because David's knowledge and his star quality when it comes to sports and athletics and college athletics and professional athletics across the board, even in the high school realm, David's the man. I mean, I, he's got more sports paraphernalia stuffed in his head than anybody that I know. And it's just, it's great to have him back. Dave, we're going to go to break here in a minute or so. Just take a take thirty seconds or so to kind of set up where what you'd like to talk about in the in the realm of sports and life. Go right ahead. Take about thirty minute, thirty seconds to kind of get that. Uh, well, I'd really like to talk about uh, transfer portals, NIL. Uh, I'd like to talk a little bit about uh, maybe the Detroit Lions. Uh, maybe you know if they can continue to get better, going maybe deep in the playoffs. Uh, I'd like to talk about. Uh, you know, some of the things that have happened, uh, not only college athletics, but especially, you know, where we're, we're accustomed to at Michigan State University in the last few years there. Now, I know this is a national show, but a lot of people maybe can get, a, you know, a couple of ideas of what has transpired over the last five, to, really five to 10 years, not just a couple of years. Exactly. I mean, and that's a good lead in. And thank you, Dave, for doing that. I'm going to carry this through. Let me reset this thing. David DeMarco is my guest today. My very, 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 very good friend. I mean, we're like brothers from another mother. I talk to Dave every day and we do a lot of work together. As far as our video content goes, we're building this business and it's just, it takes a team. It really does take a team to pull these things together. And that's why I'm calling this scoreboard. We're going to talk about some athletics. We're going to talk about refirement with David. We're going to talk about everything. And get everybody caught up because there's so many people out there that just think Dave's the king, and as I do as well. Again, resetting this. David DeMarco is my guest. Calling this one scoreboard. You listen to Tom Mancha. My little clicker wasn't working real good for a second there. It's like. Fucking technology. I swear to God. 
No, we got all kinds of good things that we can talk about, Dave. I'm going to go right down that list when we start. Okay. Yeah, whatever. Uh, I mean, it, you know me. I'm not a, it, I'm it's not for you. shy. I'd like to talk about, and we're going to talk about refinement down the road, but let's get the sports stuff out of the way because people, anything you want to talk about. I know you're, you're all good. This is really cool. I mean, the, how the zoom is, it oh, really yeah. is. And I've done, you know, usually do them on the phone. That's what, uh, yeah, they want like, me, they want me to do this in Lansing. And I'm like, I didn't even, I mean, I don't think I will ever be doing another one in Lansing, Michigan uh, without those two women again. These, these, we're going to get you back as a regular, regular, and just talking about, because I, you know, it's good. It's good for us to talk like this. Yeah, no, yeah, it's good. It's really, it's, it's great content and people like it. And so we're sort of pivoting with the show and what's popular. And, um, and plus I'm doing a lot of work with Michigan state and you, as you know, I mean, so let's do this. I got to read for Craig. Okay. And we'll do that. And then we'll get rocking. Here we go. Second segment of the Tom Ant show is sponsored by Craig, Craig, Craig. Another one of our joint friends from David DeMarco and all the connections that we've had across our, our years of knowing each other. Your Ameriprise Financial Advisor, my Ameriprise Financial Advisor, David's Ameriprise Financial Advisor is Craig Stiles. He is the best. He is the bomb. He can help you plan for the life you want today and well into the future love Craig so much. And as Dave does too, with the right financial advisor, life can be ism, be brilliant. Call Craig 1-800-528-1355. Local number is 517-483-4893. Emails craig.styles at ampf.com. His offices are located here locally in mid-Michigan, 2400 Lake Lansing Road, Suite B is in Brilliant or Bism, Lansing, Michigan, 48912. The thing about, and don't be afraid to get a hold of Craig if you're in another part of the country, if you're listening to the podcast and you're, you're picking this up and like, ah, Ameriprise is a huge company and we want you to connect with him. He can vet, he can send you to someone perhaps in your local area. So much of this work that we do now is all remote. And it's like doing all these zoom recordings with the radio programming. It's just, it's, it's fantastic what the technology can do. Let the financial people who know their stuff help you figure it out because he's helped us. And again, full disclosure, Craig's been our guy for a while now. He's got all of our refirement zone savings, all of it, which I'm glad he created Desideri analytics where we are making light of weighted decisions here are some of the stations that are carrying us, have carried us all over the place. I'm grateful to any radio station that has carried us. Radio changes all the time, as my guest today, David DeMarco, will testify. And so you just got to be grateful. WGHN 92.1 in Grand Haven, WGIM 1240 AM in Lansing, as David knows them very well, the flagship of the Michigan Talk Network, WGRW 1340 in Grand Rapids, WKLQ 1490 AM in Muskegon Whitehall, WYPV FM 94.5 Mackinac City, and, of course, our PBS affiliate at Michigan State University, WKAR, East Lansing, the home of the Spartans. Go green. Again, thanking Craig Stiles for creating Desideri Analytics because that's what pushes him over the top with making decisions on your finances. It's his proprietary algorithm. He created this before. Algorithm was a cool word. That's what pushes him over the top. Thanks, Steve and Ivy Gruber, for carrying us on there on their syndication on the Michigan Talk Network. And, of course, go to Amazon. Check out our books there. We've got four books there. And I'll tell you about it, the website, TomMattShow.com. You can find all. You can find everything at the website, TomMattShow.com, which, again, another thing that Dave helped us with was getting that thing created and polished up years ago. All right, my guest today is my very, very good friend, best friend, David DeMarco, Score, calling this one Scoreboard. David is the, as I said in the first segment, he's the most knowledgeable person when it comes to athletics, sports, trivia history all of it i mean if you want a good opinion on sports this is the guy okay so we're going to go through some not only the refinement zone that he's gone through because of his changes in his life which he talked about in the first segment but now let's talk about all of the changes that are happening across the world and i just it, it, it's just an amazing time to be alive and to be able to share this knowledge dave let's start right at the top you're a nonconformist, as you said earlier. So am I, and I love it. And that's why we're brothers. Everything in sports is nonconformity now. 
it seems like it seems like everything has changed. Let's start right at the top, man. Let's start with the transfer portal. What the hell is it? Why is it good? Why is it bad? Whatever. In your opinion, go ahead. You're the you're the man. Talk well, I mean, the transfer portal. Uh, I think it is a good means to an end. I think that for all those years that coaches left when they recruited a player, and then the player goes to that specific college, and then he could not transfer for a year, so he sort of stuck. And I think maybe that was the seed that this really came from. But the transfer portal can be beneficial, and it also can be a deterrent to an athlete. I mean, if athletes, the problem with athletes today is, like I was on a radio program yesterday out of Grand Rapids, uh, Steve Projects, and I'm on about once a month, and I continue to say uh, a lot of today's athletes starting in fourth and fifth grade, they have their rear ends kissed, and they're just used to silver spoon and mouth, no matter what what family they come from, whether it's a one parent family, whether it's a wealthy family, if they're a strong athlete, they're already getting looked at by colleges in fifth, sixth, seventh grade. And when they go to a, a university and things don't work out like they think, they think the grass is greener on the other side. And a lot of times it's not. I've always said, you know, if things aren't working out, what you need to do is get better and, and work harder and get with your coaches. And what am I doing wrong? Instead of like, you know, jumping ship and bailing and think it's going to be better somewhere else. I don't know of too many players that have gone into the transfer portal and they've blown up uh, at that university that they've gone to. There's handfuls, but they just think, you know, like Michigan State had 27. I, I understand why Michigan State guys would leave. I mean, if they were recruited by Mel Tucker and, and the garbage that he brought to the forefront, and then you have a new new uh, head coach, but even before that, not knowing who the coach was, something like that, I understand. But a lot of these uh, players, I think they split because they're not getting the adequate playing time that they believe they need instead of working harder to get better. Uh, so, and as far as NIL, I mean, it's been a topic of conversation almost like as long as, you know, should Pete Rose be in the Pete Rose be in the, the Hall of Fame? Uh, should they get play, they get paid? And I, I think they should, but I think it's really going to get out of control when you have donors that, you know, I, I just go back. We're, we're in two years now under the NIL. July was two years this past July 2023. I, I don't know where it's going to go. I don't know how it's going to be policed. I don't know how this is going to, you know, last year, Bryce Young out of uh, Alabama, who was with the Panthers now, he made the most. He made $3 million. Now you have like a second string offensive lineman that could make two and a half, two million, three million dollars $3 million a year. And uh, it's not just money. It's real estate. It's jewelry. It's vacations. It's homes. It's automobiles. I mean, anything can go in NIL. So it's it's really the mid-major schools, the smaller schools, they're really going to take a bash, and they already have, because these other athletes will split and go where they think they can get paid. Uh, and there's nothing wrong with getting paid, but you also have to be a realist about it, too. And I think that's what uh, some of the lower-end Big Ten schools are going through. I think that's what MAC schools are going through. I mean, you look at the Big Ten now, and it's you're going to have PAC 12 schools that are going to be coming here and they're i mean michigan state's going to have to go to the west coast now to play all the other schools that are coming here ucla usc oregon oregon state and it's just nuts i mean the college landscape is just from our you know when we were just talking about this yesterday there's 41 bowl games there used to be like six maybe bowl games tops i mean there's the you know the, the, the toilet bowl there's the crap bowl i mean they're just stupid bowls and and there's like one or two people they're probably making a profit out of it nobody goes to these games nobody watches these games and, and it's just getting to a point where it's just stupid all right we're gonna we're gonna come back we got so much to talk about with this this whole topic my guest today let me reset this thing everybody david demarco the mad dog my brother from another mother and i mean it, i mean that sincerely I mean, we have been so tight for a long, long time now. Love talking to Dave. We talk every day. Don't get him on the show enough. We're going to do more and more of Dave's picking his brain with athletics because he's our go-to subject matter expert when it comes to athletics. That's why I'm calling this episode Scoreboard. When David comes in the house, it's scoreboard time, baby. David DeMarco is our guest today. You're listening to The Tom Edson.
fucking cake. Why don't you ask me some about some of the media people that I've had to deal with I will absolutely uh, in the last 25 years that don't believe what you just said, how I can answer that question. I'm going to go right there as soon as I do Jamie's read. Let's do this. I'm not going to say any names. No, no, no. I'm, do whatever I'm you gonna, want. I'm going to steer the automobile in the, the direction where people will know. That's entertainment, baby. That's what we're I'm, I'm just going to, you know, and I don't even, this is, these people don't understand this stuff. They don't understand their own stuff. So you're right. You're right. And that's why it's going to be good to get you in now that you've, you know, done your first Zoom call when you see how freaking easy it is it's like yeah i just and i'm just, glad tony was here just to uh, it's like, get great. It good organized. To so we'll just get used to it oh yeah it's easy it's just it's just like everything else we just got to do you know refinement stuff and learn i've been learning too like learning how to turn on the record button when i'm fucking starting this that's show. okay that was i was laughing that's do that. no it's cool man it's 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 real see that's the whole thing about what we do you know we're yeah. just you know, we're just doing our thing man here we go Third segment of the Tom Matt show is sponsored by our brand new last week's guest, actually, Jamie White with White Law. We had such a great conversation, and I have to thank David DeMarco for putting us together because we need to share good people. That's what we do. We've got to share good people and what they do. Jamie White and White Law PLLC is where justice meets compassion. But it's way more than that. He talked about his business aspect. He talked about his networking. He talked about all the people. He doesn't have to have 100 attorneys working on his staff because he's got a giant network out there, and that's the way technology works, and that's what that's how we're doing this radio program. So it's all good. Go to White Law, where justice meets compassion. They are your advocate in times of need. They have been they're, – they're our guy. They're David's guy. My guest today, David DeMarco. They're there to listen, support, fight for what you deserve. Awesome people. I mean, the best. Contact White Law today for your free consultation. I did say free. Visit whitelawpllc.com or call 517-777-9785. The easiest way of a, to, the easiest way to get a hold of our sponsors and friends is to go to our website tommatshow.com at the bottom of the homepage is all of the banners, which link right to their websites, works perfectly. All of our social media is there. If you got a question for me, you don't want to get a hold of Jamie, but you want to get a hold of me. You want to got a question for David. You want me to post because David, my guest today, David DeMarco, is going to be on the show much more regularly now. And if you've got questions, you want me to ask Dave, then DM us, whatever. Lots of people know Dave. Lots of people know me. And so please do. But again, thanks to David and White Law for helping us keep this boat floating and we're, we're making progress and don't forget about the mad dog minutes. Don't forget about the mad dog minutes. We'll talk about that in a second here when we get David back in here. All right. Scoreboard, David DeMarco, David, we talked a little bit about transfer portal NIL. There's so many topics we need to cover. It's been a while since you get, I, I apologize for not having you back more regularly. We're going to fix that. That's going to happen because you're talented you're 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 national you're doing radio you got picked up you were doing radio for the university of alabama and their tailgate stuff and post game stuff so you're, you're a big demand and you, you found a happy place down at cedar bluff cedar bluff alabama let's talk more about media people and your experience and how do we help people through your 25 plus years of being in media, so many people will come to you. You've helped so many people. You helped me tremendously to get my foot in the door and learn the ropes. Talk about media people. This, this may go a little way up while, but that's all right. Go right ahead. Well, I mean, uh, my background was in the restaurant business when I, I was a national caller on the Joe Chevalier sports buffet program for a couple of years. When, what year was that, Dave? Just to put some perspective. That was in 1992, I'm pretty sure. And like four years later, uh, I was picked up by uh, my friend Jeff Hager and Randy Plant because uh, they heard me many times uh, on this program. And uh, they started this show called The Sports Guys. And we don't have, really have to get into that. We talked about that in my last show, May 13th of, uh, you know, going on two years ago. But the bottom line is um, there's a lot of media people, young and old, that, I mean, I came out of nowhere. Okay. I didn't take, I was self-taught. 
Okay. I, I did graduate uh, uh, from Central Michigan University with a industrial management supervision, a BAA from there in 82, and never really done anything with that degree. Um, I, I worked for my family, and then I wanted to be on sports radio. And so I persevered, uh, did some jobs. I worked uh, as, uh, and got a strong sales background in radio and in other areas of sales. So I parlayed that with uh, getting into radio. And 26 years later, we came to Cedar Bluff. I've dealt with some really good media people, and I've dealt with some really jackass media people. I've dealt with people that are narcissistic. I've dealt with people that are very nice. I've dealt with people that to this day uh, don't care for you know what I did or they didn't like my uh, shows. And to those people, I just say... Let me ask you real quick. I'm sorry to cut you, but why do you think that is? Jealousy. You... Okay. I and mean, be... jealousy. I and mean, like I said, I came out of nowhere... Uh, it, it got very popular, uh, and it took a while. It's not like I just like was Samantha Stevens or I Dream a Genie, and you know, this stuff happened. I worked very hard, and I also had to do the sales end of it too. Uh, with a regimented group, I had some really good sales bosses, and I had some really bad jackass sales bosses. So that that just goes hand in hand in radio and TV. You're dealing with people that have big egos that, that know all know all, but they've never done it, and it still still is like that. And uh, to the people that you know always underestimated me, that's the people that I proved that I want to just put my head through a brick wall to prove them wrong. And even to this day, these same people um, tell, and it gets back to you because people talk. You know, they're like spray guns talking. And to that, I just, you know, I respect everybody that does this because it's not easy. But there's a lot of people that like to get on people's shirt tails and, and uh, hopscotch over people to try to get ahead. A, a and in the long run, they might have a 20-year career, but in the long run, it, it, it'll all backfire. But getting, getting back to that's really what my well, motivation is. David, what about all the people that you assisted like me? I mean, there's a lot of people that you. Assist. I would say half the people that I assisted uh, were people that really looked at me as a, a, not a stepping stone, but a guy that really could network and help them network, and really to this day are are unappreciative of it. And that you know, and that's fine. That's totally fine. I, I you know, I could go off even more, but I on this. Uh, on, on your program out of due respect for those people too. It's just, they know who they are. They know, you know, people sometimes got to take a hard look uh, and get humbled. And sometimes that doesn't happen, but most of the times it does. But our younger people that are coming up, Dave is, is you're a mentor to a lot of people and you're, you're very w wise and you've had, you got all this experience. You've done this. You climbed out of nothing to become uh, a member of the hall of fame. I mean, what, what kind of advice would you give to young people that are trying to get into media now? Because media has completely changed since you started, you know, almost 30 years ago. What kind well, of it's got it's gotten very digital oriented, uh, which is fine and, and content and writing. And that's great. I, I think that some of these radio stations have gotten away from broadcasting and entertainment business. It, it's more revenue. It used to be ratings and revenue. It's more revenue and ratings. But I mean, again, in this day and age, when you're dealing with younger people, it, it's hard to convey the message that you want to do because a lot of these people, uh, male or female, they got all the answers and they, they won't listen to you until they run into a brick wall or something uh, happens to them. And then they need assistance or they need advice. And then I've had people that have come back and did that. And then after they get advice or they do get help, then I, they ghost me or they'll, they'll, they won't, you know, I mean, I've had everything thrown that's, at me. That's I, I really, your attitude, bro. I've really, I've really had just about every kind of thing thrown at me uh, to the point where it's, it, it is laughable. It's it, it really is. It's, it's it, is. it really is. I mean, you know, you get PO'd about it. I, you know, and I used to, but a really, really big gauge that happened to me when my mother passed away uh, was, you know, where you would read stuff on the internet uh, that people would make up or they would, 
they would gas you or or people that you worked with would and and I just told myself that was a big deal in my life. Uh, my mother passed away being an only child. Uh, and I don't have to dwell on that, but that was a big deal. And dealing with, you know, dealing with people that just don't have a lot of respect for other people. Uh, uh, and just, they're, they're in a narcissistic behavior. I just really have no time for anymore in my life. David DeMarco is our guest today, everybody. I'm going to reset this thing because we're going to come back. We're going to talk more about this, but I want to leave this segment with, with a word that both of us, we talk about constantly. And it reflects back on what David was just talking about. It's accountability. If you don't have accountability in your life, you are going to be in deep, deep doo-doo. So you got to think about these things again. So here's where we go with scoreboard. And that's what I'm calling today's episode. And I might start calling all of David's episodes scoreboard because David DeMarco is my guest. I'm very, very grateful to have him as a very good friend and as a guest today because he knows his stuff. You're listening to the Tom Hatch. Learned it all from you, bro. And I'm going to talk to the camera right now and say, this dude brought me in. I didn't know diddly crap. I was sweating so hard when I was in the studio with him. And we could, having Dave in as a regular, we can rehash so many stories about when I'd go into his studio. <laughs> I mean, we don't have the time. You were swearing and stuff. Oh, my God. Oh, well, I mean, how many producers? What about when Chase was oh, doing the 6 o'clock morning deal? Oh, the morning show. I, I, think, I think that that time period in my life, that six months that he was the, I think God was punishing me for anything that I might have did dishonest <laughs> in, in, the, in the neighborhood to uh, people at Central Michigan University. Not dishonest, but. You know what I'm saying. I'm gonna go. You know what I'm gonna I'm gonna go to one of your. What is one of your favorite stories that we used to talk about on radio that used to make me laugh my ass off? It was. Um, you mean the leeches. The leeches was one of the best. I mean the the Tim Stout with his. Uh, we don't have the sound bite for his uh, putting his locking his bike and getting. Yeah, his he. Any of that kind of stuff. I'm going to go to the leeches, though. I want to talk. He's about not. That. He he's one of the good ones. Just since in the just in the last few weeks, it got back to me that um he was the one that he he still is that he never liked me on the radio, and you know why, don't you? It's like I just said the word. Exactly. 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 Yeah. Let's let's roll. Here we go. I'm gonna do my Brock read. Know where the fuck is it? Hilarious. I'm glad we're doing this. This is really great. Here we go. How long do we go? Uh, we got two more segments. So about okay. another 20 minutes. Okay. We're good. Fourth segment is sponsored by Brock, Brock, Brock Fletcher. Joint friend of both my guests today, David DeMarco and myself, and my family. Brock, full disclosure again, helped us sell Big House Holt. Stop. Hold on. Oh, I forgot to move my cursor. Dave, I got I thought I did that. What the fuck? Okay, I'm glad I caught that. Here we go. Let's start this again. My producer's gonna think I'm fucking a rookie. Jesus. Here we go. Fourth segment of the Tom Matt Show is sponsored by Brock, Brock, Brock at the selling team of Keller Williams. And again, full disclosure, Brock, Brock, Brock helped us sell Big House Holt, which was amazing because that was during the pandemic. Then he helped us find through Mike Deadman, a guy on his team, Little House Lansing, where we're recording this episode right now with my best friend, David DeMarco. And we just, we just roll on, man. We have great people who help us. And if you're looking for some real estate help, assistance you can go to not only our our website and find the reality of real estate and all those episodes with brock or the financial fitness with all those or whatever i'm going to call the law dog with, with jamie you can find those and you can get those and they're free i mean just go there here's a couple of phone numbers coming at you for brock 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 ready 517-853-6408 is the local number to the office. Here's the key number. This is the number to his pocket, his cell phone, 517-303-3262.
you can go online to kwsellingteam.com, kwsellingteam.com, sell your home without hassles. But again, the easiest way to find our sponsors is to go to our website, tommatshow.com. And at the bottom of that homepage, where you guys should be finding all of the podcasts and all of the video stuff and all Dave's minutes, all those. I mean, there's links to everything over there, but the key links are to our sponsors. Go there and it take you right to them. Most agents, most real estate agents start selling your home. They, they invest they invest money in marketing when you're starting to sell your home. Brock invests way ahead of time because he wants to establish his credibility across mid-Michigan, across the country. And again, another key factor, just like with Craig, Craig, Craig and Ameriprise, Keller Williams is a massive company. So you want to make sure you can leverage it because, again, if you're listening to this show and you're in Texas or California or wherever, Georgia, Alabama, where Dave's at, Get a hold of him. He can vet him. He can set you up with a person who is in your area that can make it work for you and make this very, very seamless. Once again, his number you want to contact him with is 517-303-3262. Go to kwsellingteam.com for more information there. My guest today is my best friend, David DeMarco. Calling this one scoreboard. David's a legend. And, and I, I consider him just a an awesome talent with a great brain. And we were talking about media people, and we won't we don't need to revisit that because the media business is is it is what it is. I mean, it's 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 changing. It's the old school the old school people out there, just like in the athletic business, David. Media has changed, just like sports has changed. Everything changes, right? I mean, right. so let's get back into. I have a note here about conference realignment and um, where you think that's going to affect things because that's going to change next year. If you're not aware of this, everybody, well, Dave, you talk about this because next year is when everything starts to show. I mean, conference realignment is uh, it's not geographical anymore. It's, it's just public. It's like public trading. I mean, it's like people are going for where the cheese is, where the Zort is, where the money is. It's all it is. They don't, there's no respect for the Big Ten. There's no respect for the Pac-12. It's like the Big 18. It's just, it's r ridiculous. It really is. I mean, the two different divisions the Big Ten has uh, that used to be legends and leaders, and, and now it's it, it's just ridiculous. It's, you know, you look at the where Michigan State, Michigan, Penn State, and uh, Ohio State are in, and then you have the other side uh, that they play in the Big Ten Championship where Iowa is the best team and they get blown out every, you know, every time they play these games. There's, the Big Ten Championships uh, are a joke. They just are. I mean, they should split this up and have it even with the two or three be better schools so you'd get more maybe a Michigan-Ohio State or a Penn State-Ohio uh, State Championship where you don't get that. And I don't know, sometimes – Things are so easy to figure out that people make them so difficult to figure out. It's just, uh, it's unbelievable. It, it really is. So uh, as far as, you know, teams that got to travel to the West Coast from the Midwest, it's it's just taking money and burning it. People don't go to the games. People, I mean, it, as far as, you know, we said that doing the tailgates when I was living in mid-Michigan, all the tailgate shows I did, People just rather party and sit in the, in the parking lots and sit on the, the fields. And people now they're so they're so like NASA control. They bring satellite dishes and they can watch the games and with the way they cook, they like the hell with that. I'm not going into the game. Um, so I don't know as far as the NCAA. I don't even know if it will exist. Uh, it, it's it's a point where uh, big time college athletics is still big time money. I mean, I know that, you know, when March Madness comes, the NCAA for three weeks makes just a ton of money. I don't know if that'll continue. I mean, you saw the Big Ten commissioner, Warren, travel from, you know, taking over for Delaney. He was there for a cup of coffee, and then he splits to be the president of the Chicago Bears. I mean, it's all about chasing dollars, and I, I don't have a problem with that. It's just, it's like they leave carnage in their path, and that's what a lot of these coaches, a lot of these uh, administrators, a lot of these athletic directors, uh, they just leave carnage where they are. And, and if you mention anything, I mean, I, when I used to say things on the radio, you know, if people have rabbit ears and it's one thing if you're going to make stuff up and have fake news, but when you, you're on a trail and you're saying things that are true, it's the people that are listening to it, or they give messages to their friends 
and say, Hey, you know, did you hear mad dog talking about that? And then I get a phone call from people and I'm like, well, they're like, why in the hell would you say that? And I'm like, well, maybe cause it's true. Well, you still shouldn't be able to, I said, Hey man, it's talk radio. That's what fuels us. Now, if you make stuff up and I said this, I said this to uh, Steve project on his program yesterday, I'm, I'm a firm believer that I'm pretty credible. When I first started, I was like, intense on the radio i mean i swore i said things that were not right it was howard sternish i did this i said that i went after nick saban when he was the head coach of michigan state that was that was a learning point uh chuck irby the former volleyball coach when he finally met me he took me aside and he said listen the sexist stuff that you're saying and the things that you're saying i'm not gonna let any of my women's volleyball players be on your show because he said, Dave, you got to understand I've been around. Okay. There's only so much of the pie that people like the rest of the pie. They want to be entertained, but they don't want to be entertained with this, that, and whatever. So, I mean, I have had a few people that have spiraled off of me as producers or coworkers. And it's, and I say this too, and it, it's easy to, to rip and tear and take a carpet knife and gut players or coaches. If, if they've played bad or they played good, you don't give, you know, let, let's read the book to the end of the cover. I understand all that, but I also know that, you know, I worked at a place where Michigan State University was the flagship station, and I also was the top sports salesman, and I still am, and I live in Alabama. Uh, so I had to, I had to have a buffer you got to tell what's true, but you can't, you don't need to go overboard because people are so smart in sports. Now they can draw their own conclusions. I, I had a baptism by fire with the Bobby Williams incident. Bobby and his wife were friends of mine and Bobby, uh, it didn't work out for him at Michigan state. People were putting for sale signs on his property and I don't have to go into that. And I learned through that. I mean, I have a good friendship with uh, coaches that are still there and coaches that left. And I just know how to, to know which is personal and what's business. Sort of like a Vito Corleone thing. I know what's, you know, what you can do and what you can't do. And I see a lot of younger people today across the country and locally that they think that, you know, by, you know, gassing and ripping, but if they had to see that person on the street, they would be kissing their butt. You know, it's easy, it's easy to do that. Okay. I'm not saying that you can't fall into that. It's, but it's easy. The hard thing is standing your ground. And when I went through the Bobby Williams situation, it was a rough period. I mean, it was a rough period. I had a man call me one of the worst things that was ever said to me uh, in the, in the show that I had had enough. The football was not good. Bobby Williams was the coach. I had a man call me up and say, what you're doing to Bobby Williams, Hitler did to the Jews. And that's probably one of the worst things that I've ever had said to me. That was a learning curve. And there was a person that just was let go by a TV station in Lansing. And people know who I'm talking about. I don't know this person that well. but And I don't know all the intricate stuff that went on to her deal. But if she would have contacted me and asked me for advice on something, I could have helped her. And she still might be employed at that place of business. People make decisions, again, going back to the word that I closed the previous segment with everybody, accountability. David DeMarco is our guest today. We're going to go to break here in a second. We're going to have our final segment coming up here. If you are if you lose the fourth, the, if you don't get the fifth segment on your broadcast, go to the podcast, howmatshow.com, pick up the fifth segment because the fifth segment usually has lots of fireworks and fun things. Again, resetting this thing, calling this episode scoreboard with my brother from another mother, best friend, David the Mad Dog, DeMarco. You're listening to The Tom Man Show. Beautiful. Let's talk about refirement. We got the fifth segment. This is where um, plug, 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 Dave, if you want people to get a hold of you or not. Um, that's okay. Okay. I'll, uh, oh, you you have, got it. You have that handy with your phone number or email or whatever you'd like to use. Dick Eiding uh, said yesterday or Friday, it might have been Friday before I went to work, he he said uh, that he's still thinking about it. So, you know what? 
he's gonna he, we're gonna pass over him if he wants to do it we'll have to uh, talk about that off air because i wasn't real sure on that message i kind of got the gist of that but we'll talk about that off the recording all right cool i mean as long as people are getting entertained with what we're doing with our content it's all good man um but do you have um do you have your email and your phone numbers and everything right there handy so you can uh, use that? Or or you don't have to do it at all if you don't want, Dave. We'll just keep going. I don't know what you're talking about. What do you, what do you mean? Right. Where I, where I uh, give the guests the chance to plug whatever they want to plug. You know, it's like, they're hey, if you want to get a hold of me, call me. Here's my Facebook, whatever. But we we can skip over that if you want. I don't even have people, to. Go. People, don't worry. People are smart enough. They can figure out as far as social media how to get a hold of you. I, I know that for the last five years. I've had a lot of people get a hold of me that I haven't wanted to get a hold of. I'm just going to mention. I'm just going to throw it to you. You just say, hit me on my social media. or call, Go to our website. Go to the top. Yeah, that's all. Yeah, that's I'm, fine. Whatever. Here we go. Make sure I got my thing moved over here. Welcome back. Welcome back to the radio program, podcast, whatever you want to call this thing, video. Fifth segment's always the best because it's it's a kind of a limited thing. We're carried on WKR, our PBS affiliate. Thank you for Michigan State University for carrying us on AM 870, 5 o'clock in the afternoon on Sunday afternoons. Wonderful. And getting the fifth segment, they take all five segments of the radio program. But then you can get the podcast at TomMatShow.com, and that's where you can connect with us on all our social media. Whatever social media that you like to use, you can use that and get a hold of us, DM me. I would prefer, actually, everybody, if you, and like I talk about in my Dad Talk videos, just go to the contact box of the website and send us a note. And we will get in touch with you. If you got a question for David, my guest, my, he's going to be more of a regular on our show, um, talking about sports, talking about all kinds of good things. Send me a note on the website. David, how would you like people to connect with you? I know that people know you very well. You're very well known all over the country. But what what's the probably the easiest way for people to could just reach out to you directly? I mean, the same way. They can go to social media. I'm on Instagram. I'm on LinkedIn. I'm on, uh, of course, Facebook. They can do that. Uh, it's it's not hard to find where David the Mad Dog DeMarco is. I mean, I'm and I don't hide from people. I've had everything from good, bad, and the ugly sent to me uh, since social media came to the forefront. So I, I I pretty much can can handle it. I've had I've had some really funny kind of stuff uh, with social media. I mean, like I said, good, bad, and the ugly. I've had uh, some really treacherous stuff. And then I've had some wonderful stuff lately in the last 10 years. Mostly it's been uh, very good. But, you know, like I said, I can't get in people's heads and change what they believe. I can't get in people's heads. And, you know, it, the, the younger people, they have what they're going to believe and what they believe till they can't believe it. And then they, oh, yeah, I should have thought of that. You know, so I I uh, am a true believer now of like you said, accountability, but I, like I said, I'm also a guy that hitches my uh, wagon. And I said this earlier in the broadcast to uh, you know, when people underestimate me, that that's when I'm the strongest because I just sit back sometimes and just don't put all my cards in front till I need to. I, I, I just, I just do. That's wisdom right there. That's a smart move. And that's something that you could learn from David. And so reach out to him on his social media or contact us or comment on his uh, Mad Dog Minutes, which are very popular, and it's going great. I mean, it's just all of all the things that we're doing to recreate our own lives because we're both in the refinement zone, which means we're working more now than we were when we were working like full time at our. Yeah, when you have when you have a nice mortgage, you got to take care of that mortgage. So, exactly. but you know what, I I, I I'm, wouldn't have done it any other way. And again, those three individuals you talked about, we couldn't have made this move without uh, Craig Styles and, and Ameriprise and. Uh, Amy and Karen are who his uh, right-hand people are. And he would say the same thing. He couldn't do what he does without their intense. But Amy, Amy's been there since she worked for Bob Smith, uh, Craig's brother-in-law or father-in-law who passed away tragically in a drowning incident in the big bay up in Traverse City. And uh, Jamie White and I have become very close friends in the last three years. He's a wonderful individual, smart. Uh, he represented a lot of victims well a few victims from both the nasser incident and the dr anderson incident uh, at u of m uh again we talked about uh brock fletcher and you know there, there's a few mickey mantle 
uh, realtors in that area. And he's definitely in the Mickey Mantle, Babe Ruth, Ty Cobb uh, area. There's no getting around it. He is a wonderful guy. He is a he is a feverishly tireless worker. The stuff that how, how Fletcher does it and the people that are under his umbrella. I know that for a fact. So I just want to give those guys uh, a shout out too. Doing that, David. I appreciate that. Coming from you, that's very high praise. Let's talk about some other things that have been happening in your life with the refirement zone and your refirement zone because people need to embrace this. You can either retire, as I've said before, or you can refire and you can go the other direction and shoot on the rocket ship. You're on the rocket ship with Weiss Radio now in Center, Alabama. Talk about Jerry and um, the whole environment down there, how different it is for you and, and the responsibilities and duties and things that you've learned. You've continued to learn. Your maturation has never stopped. You've learned the technology. You've been continuing. It's funny, when I when I text you uh, in the day where we're doing our editing for, the, for your videos, it's like, well, I'm editing. And it's like, yeah, well, see, we're both doing the editing thing. Neither, neither one of us did editing until recently. And it's like, but that's what the whole point of the refinement zone is, right, Dave? Give throw some love to. Well, your- I mean, let's let's just go back when we came here. Um, I didn't work for one year. I, I worked. I, I shouldn't say that because I worked very hard to um, sell advertising for Lansing Town Square Media and sports, and I did was very successful in what I did from abroad, ten to twelve hours drive away uh, for Michigan State Athletics. I, I was the top salesman of the people that were that are still selling there and it wasn't it, it hasn't and wasn't been and it still to this day is not easy if i can say that it's not terrible but it's not easy when you have to deal in a situation like that but the former person who was my boss Zobra Dean fly who's not there any longer she thought it was a wonderful idea and then they had a new regime after she left come in and um the transition was not easy uh but it was successful on my part and and I couldn't have done it without the people in Lansing's part so I I had to go back to work three years ago when Carol and I came into this area we did an impromptu uh uh I guess you could say drive in uh to Weiss Radio that's uh in downtown center Alabama we met the owner 2018 in Alabama broadcaster here Jerry Baker we stayed in touch with him uh finally I had to go back to work to a brick and mortar kind of situation Plus, I, like I said, I still do the uh, the sales for Lansing Town Square Media, but uh, Jerry hired me. I went to work in June. A lot of people in Lansing do not know that. I am the afternoon newsman for Weiss Radio, 100.5 uh, FM, and it's simulcast on AM. Uh, it's weisradio.com. You can find it. And I do four and five o'clock newscasts. That would be five and six o'clock uh, Eastern time. And again, all my editing was done by producers and Brock Palm Bush. And I just didn't think when Jerry hired me to be the newsman, I was I was a little bit freaked out because I didn't think I could do this. And he worked f- so hard with me. It wasn't one of those guys saying, oh, my God, Dave, you don't know how to do this yet. What the hell? What is wrong with you? He took me under his wing and he showed me how to do it with all his years. And um, I can do this job pretty damn well now. I have to travel to different areas, different towns around uh, uh, in Cherokee County. That's where I live in Cherokee County. And I know all the mayors now. I know all the chief of police now. I do stories on their um, the, these meetings. And uh, I work with some really good people. Not that I didn't work with good people in Lansing, because I worked with, you know, top-notch people, you know, the, and the, I, I did. Uh, again, it's it's a different kind of mentality and news from sports. When I was in sports radio, you know, I was, you know, like stand-up comedy, like in Second City. Uh, this I can't. I have a regimented uh, way to talk. And it, we it's funny because we do local happenings. We do the news, local and state. And then we do the inmate report as part of that news. Then we do the obituaries, the people that pass away from Cherokee County. So it's about a 15 minute broadcast. Uh, and that's, that's where it is. And he has just had a lot of positive, uh, reflection and a lot of positive rub on me. And, uh, I couldn't be happier. There's a lot of people in Lansing that don't know it, that I do that, but that's what I do. 
And, uh, and we do other stuff down here too, but it's mostly that. And of course, the selling of Michigan State and high school sports uh, with the two people that I deal with up in Lansing, Michigan. Great story. Excellent synopsis. We're coming up on a close of the show here. So I'm going to give Dave a couple of minutes to kind of follow up with this. This is going to become a regular part of our of our broadcast, everybody. We're going to start doing this as a, as a category on the show. Call it Scoreboard with David DeMarco. And I just kind of like the whole thing. Dave, again, we have two minutes to go before we got to break this bad boy down. What would you like to leave with your with your latest visit back to my show? And I thank you for taking the time to do this today. What would you like to leave the listeners with as, as closing thoughts from the Mad Dog? Well, I mean, Mid Michigan is always my home. Always. My parents are buried in St. Joe's Cemetery. My relatives are there, uh, buried there, but my relatives are there. Uh, Carol's relatives are there. Uh, that's where we grew up. We both attended Lansing Catholic Central, Lansing Catholic High School. That's where my stepkids uh, also attended. I have a lot of close friends that are still there. And, uh, you know, for the people that wondered why in the hell would you go to Alabama and this is your town and this is, you know, things change lives change and you only have one go around it uh you know doing things and this just had everything that i wanted my brother and sister-in-law niece and nephew are next door neighbors that's who i bought our property from it's got a civil war history it's got an indian a native american uh history it's got fishing and hunting and the people are just uh just, just it's great and uh i we will and i will come back periodically to visit but I couldn't be happier uh, in this location right now in my lifetime. Good synopsis from Dave and, and uh, for everybody out there, we're, Sandy and I plan on going to visit with Dave and Carol here in February when we do our winter trip and we're going to plan on staying at their house and seeing the whole area and meeting the people down there. I'm looking so forward to it. I'm going to close this thing, everybody. If our show fits your business or group's mission, we want to be of service to you. That's what we do here. We are servant leaders and we want to help our community all over. I'd like to help Weiss radio. I mean, well, I, want and I want to tell you this, anybody out there that would like to be a sponsor of the mad dog minute, get a hold of us because uh, it's going to only get bigger and better. Thank you for saying that, David. I appreciate that. Always remember, before you can share love with others, you must love yourself first. Thanks again to my brother from another mother, David DeMarco, Sandy Matt, Craig Styles, Brock Fletcher, all the students that we've helped and worked with. We'll talk to you next weekend, everybody. Have a great week. Ignite your life. Before I say good day now, I want to say thank you to the legend, Mitch Anderson, our producer. Tom Mitch is a production of Boomer's Rock Media. We want to bring your story to life. Thank you so much for listening. We are out. Boom. Good. good. Fucking great, man. I don't gonna... think I spewed too much gas, but I, the gas it's that I spewed. The best across. And um, I, I'm serious. I mean, if you talk to Jerry and he wants us just to send him the hour package, he can have it. It's, there's no cost at all. I'd be just, I'd be grateful to him to broadcast it on. If he wanted to put it on at three o'clock in the morning, I wouldn't care. I mean, if he's got a spot for a talk show, I will. I'll, I'll ask him. I'll ask him tomorrow. Yeah. Would you please? That would be great. Yeah. I mean, if be really a, a feather in our cap to get on a out of state. I'll ask him. I'll ask him. All right, Tom. All right, have a great day. We never even you, talk about you that. just click All off. Right, then see, this, is why have, this is why I got to have you back, Dave, because we didn't talk about the lines. We didn't talk about Mel Tucker. We there's so many things we could continue to talk about. Yeah, I'm make this more of a regular thing, and I promise you. I mean, it won't be every month, but it'll be every couple. Oh, months. that's just whatever you want, whatever you need. We know how to do it now, and. That was good. I got some things subliminally off my chest that I was good. pretty happy about. I'm glad. I'm, I All, right. Hope All right. So now what do I do? Just hit leave then? Yeah, just hit leave and then you're out and tell Carol I said, uh, you know, we love you and then we'll give you, we'll see you soon and talk to you soon and have a great holiday. Okay, buddy. I'll talk to you probably tomorrow. Talk to you tomorrow. Okay. Well, buddy. I have to. I'm going to send the clip to you. All right, buddy. See you. Tell Sandy you said hi. Okay. Bye. I can't tell you how much I appreciate David coming in. And uh, that's why I screwed up a couple of things during my recording session. But that's, you know what, everybody? That's okay.
it's it's fine if you make a couple of little mistakes here and there. That's why we have people supporting us and why we do things. Don't get frustrated when you're having uh, issues here and there. <laughs> it happens and it's all good. So thank you so much for watching, listening. Uh, send us a note. You know, you can subscribe to our channels, do all of those good things. Watch the Mad Dog Minutes, watch the hashtag Dad Talks, all of that stuff. We are really crushing things right now. So thank you so much again. It's all because of you. It's all because of the people that are out there and we're just trying to help. Have a great day, everybody. Take care of yourself. Do your thing. Be good to your family. Peace out. Love y'all.